Here's a poem I've done once before in this venue, in this uh, gathering. But sometimes a poem has such resonance to, uh, to your being that uh, you, you just feel it, uh, it's worth repeating at least once so that you can feel that resonance. One should always be drunk. That's all, that's all that matters. So as not to feel time's terrible burden that breaks your shoulders and bows you down, you must get, get drunk without rest. But what with? With wine? With poetry? or with virtue as you choose. And if some time, at the steps of a palace, or in the green grass of your ditch, or in the solitude of your room, you are waking and drunkenness is already abating. Ask the wind, the wave, the star, the bird, the clock. Ask them what time it is. And the wind and the wave, the star, the bird, the clock will reply, it is time to get drunk. <laughs> So that you may not be the martyred slave of time. Get drunk, get drunk, and never cause, ne never stop for rest, with wine, with poetry, or with virtue, as you choose. Charles Baudelaire, 19th century. In darkest days of winter, at the waning of the year in the stillness of the cold comes a message soft but clear not a gathering of angels or a bugle's brazen blare but a whisper in the stillness a glimmer in the drear a promise for tomorrow, the sun will reappear And the lighting of the darkness is the lifting of a stone A message in the morning We do not walk alone Hazy days of gray Feel like cotton to the soul When life's constant disappointments Make a mockery of toil The days stretch on forever And nights are longer still And the tunnels, twists and turnings Seem an endless path until there comes a morning sunrise To free the light and will Though you might miss the signal Of the lifting of the dark A baby's laugh, a tender touch A meeting in the park The lighting of the darkness Is the lifting of a stone a message in the morning We do not walk alone We do not walk alone If the fight against injustice Wears your spirit down If you know your destination But a path cannot be found Standing by the barricades Take a look around The crowd of kindred spirits Who stand on common ground Voices raised together In a rare and holy sound The lighting of the darkness is the lifting of a stone a message in the morning we do not walk alone we do not walk alone
Thank you. So a little bit here. To me, poetry is painting with words. And painting, graphic artistry, is poetry without words. I love the lilting flow, the sound, and deeper meaning of words as much as the artist is enamored with each stroke of the brush or curve, line, and color of their piece. All these flow directly from the heart of their creator, bringing a piece of someone's soul to light for you to see and hear and experience in your own being. So instead of a collection of poetry, which, while beautiful to read, is sometimes disconnected from its context, here in this book, I have woven you a full piece, a background of prose, illustrated with poetry and art. At the beginning of each chapter, I featured from uh, work from artist Peggy McClure's collections entitled Shadows and Forces of Nature. Each piece reached out to me in my struggles and spoke without words of our journey. Alzheimer's is a journey of shadows attended by immutable forces of nature. And so I wrote a poem for each of her series. And this one is entitled Shadows. And it's interesting because um, Kate and Lauren were just giving that, us that beautiful song with the owl and the fox and the dark and the light. So it made me think of this. Shadows. In the shadows of our lives, in colors undescribed, fall softly, quietly in time. This turn, then that, now a mountain to climb a fear, a hope, or heaven. They stretch and lengthen over years, take on shapes that only dimly appear to be what they really mean. Who can into a lifetime peer find its true qualities seen in the dimly lit shadows of its suffering? Only the reflection of a thing is ever there, as if it would our sight impair to fully grasp reality. In the shadows of a life lived, learned, crisp and dark or dimly set, are wisdom's truths life's deep best in the shadows at rest. Thank you. Very quick history of the song. Most of the songs I write have history. This was written in a uh, roadhouse type of atmosphere. And there was a young lady who asked for a song, asked my partner and I if we knew the song, and I said, I don't know. And her paramour more for the afternoon, <clears throat> who was a bikey, and he looked like a registered gorilla, he uh, said, do you know what it don't you? And I said, we do now. So I made this up. I don't expect to see it on HCAM. <laughs> I've been feeling fairly frisky. So I'm out here on the prowl. Yes, the moon is fat and full. It's a real fine night to howl. I'm out looking for some action. I'm not looking for romance Something cheap and superficial <laughs> One night, no string circumstance I cruise by this little bistro And I spied you sitting here And it took me a while to find my courage About a half a dozen beers And I'm wearing my beer goggles, yes I am And you're looking mighty good if you're seeking to get lucky, I'm fairly certain that you could. Something cheap and superficial, that is all I'm looking for. I don't want to hear I love you, or you'll be mine forevermore. Something cheap and superficial, may be wrong, but it's all right. Something cheap and superficial. Is all I'm looking for tonight. Now I'm going to shorten this because I'm going to leave out the verse, which is sort of obligatory here, and and the following choruses because I'm not Bob Dylan. Now there's no use in pretending what we both have come here for, and I hope that you'll be with me when I go walking out that door. You know that I could really rock you Let me show you what I got Guarantee that you'll be grinning If you just give me a shot We could tell our lies and stories 
that would be a waste of time. And when we are dancing close, dear, you know what I got on my mind. Are you looking to get active? Would you like to take a chance? Let's get out there on a the dance floor. Start our low rent circumstance. Something cheap and superficial. That is all I'm looking for. I don't want to hear I love you. You'll be mine forevermore. Something cheap and superficial. I'll make it through the night. Something cheap and superficial. I know it's wrong, but it's all right. Now I know that you are not, dear, the sort that does this kind of thing. For you, the price of copulating comes up commitment and a ring. When I'm out looking for a bargain, don't need the flowers, cake, or rice. The first time use a special offer. One night free trial would be nice. Something cheap and superficial. It's all I'm looking for. I don't want to hear I love you. You'll be mine forevermore. Something cheap and superficial may sound a little crass. Something cheap and superficial make the empty hours pass. Something cheap and superficial is all I'm looking for tonight. And you know, something cheap and superficial, I hope my hunch about you is right. My East State Passage, we say, oh, much white light to you all. Thanks so much. Passage. Two taxis pull up at Cairo Airport. Family spills out, chattering, double cheek kisses left and right. July sun hammers our heads. Male relatives corral my husband into a black sedan. In the woman's car, one sister clasps my hand tightly. I am a citadel of sensations. Call to prayer wakes me. I sit bolt upright. Arabic echoes from speakers, bounces off minarets in the strange night of my husband's country. His father travels by train to meet me. A stroke stops his heart. Three-day funeral gathers the clan I have no language. White stucco villa is home, veiled in bougainvillea. Five mango trees stand sentry. Heavy, ripe, globos fruit falls on earth. Skin splits open. Sticky sap seeps into parched soil. Young boys scale thatch fence, pillage sweet pulp. My garden holds me in a vast hug. Ramadan begins. Dead summer heat. Fans revolve slowly. We fast sunrise to sunset. Footsteps slacken. Donkeys bray. Goats bleat all withering day. Cannon booms from fortress above. Legions praise Allah. This day done. Moon silver crescent finds me, carpets my journey. We drive barren desert road to Alexandria. Thirst stops us. Split melon juice runs down our chins. The car putt putts past a dead camel. Dust becomes sand, becomes sea. Horse surf whispers. Miko appears. Her cotton dress billows. She laughs, enfolds her son, cradles my cheeks. I find my earth mother. We zigzag across continents, Cairo, Boston, Cairo, Boston, cities beloved like ancient trees. We cradle daughter, then son. We pray for Ashraf, Miko, Scheherazade. Our caravan 
careens towards hope, dodges farewells on rutted roads. Banana palms wave in the rear view. Kneeling, standing, sweating, we cleave to baggage that cleaves our world in half. Hello, Hopkinton! I have to ask you, have you ever been in love? You know, love is such an amazing emotion. It can not only make you do things that you've never thought you'd do, ever do, but it can also cause you to display talents that you didn't even know you had, like writing poetry. Now, I like poetry because it tells a story or presents an important message. And the poetry that I especially like is the kind that rhymes. But there's another type of poetry that, while it too tells a story or presents an important message, it doesn't rhyme. It's called prose. And today, I'd like to share with you some prose that I wrote over 50 years ago in the form of a letter I wrote to my beloved wife, Claire, now deceased, when I was courting her. Oh love, sweetest love, embrace me. Oh love, sweetest love, enfold me. Take these eyes that they may behold thy beauty. Take these ears, that they may hear thy song of joy. Take the snows upon my face, that thy fragrance may descend upon it. Take these lips, that they may taste of thy sweetness. Take these hands, that they may know thy tender softness. Take this heart and fill it full of love. Thank you. This one's called On Joy. years ago and never uh, really finished it, but um, Phil and I celebrate our 35th anniversary at the end of this month, so this is for Phil. <laughs> I'm facing away from the wind <coughs> up here on the headlands, sharing my lunch with a bold and hungry gull. He's as big as a large chicken, creamy, soft gray wings, black polka dotted tail, pristine white head and belly. There's a small red dot on the bottom of his lower bill. 
He's churring and mewing at me for bits of bread, moving closer when I fail to deliver. When, he pa when his pals swoop in for a morsel, he scolds and shoos them away, comical in his predictability, but also dear. When lunch is over, he flies, leaving me alone up here to sit and remember. There's the spot down there below these boulders and as quiet today as that night so many years ago. I see us there, sitting close, low voices. Feel your nervous excitement as you fumble in your pocket for the tiny box that holds our future. I remember the anticipation, the double conditions. I think about your patience as you bit your tongue when I accepted my grandmother's invitation to dinner the night before I accepted yours. Think about the love you bestowed when babies arrived, when illness came, when death found us lost. About your generous heart that opens our home to those who find themselves in need of friendship, understanding, love. Like this vast and mighty ocean stretched out before me, the end of which I cannot see, I am remembering you over years and all the way to the edges of all those patiently waiting tomorrows. I love you. Thank you. Um, I was work, working on a, a history of slavery in Framingham, and I discovered that there was a family, the Benson family. The first one, Nero Benson, was owned by Reverend Swift. Of course, he needed help around his, his house because how else would Reverend Swift have time to write his sermons? But Nero was the trumpeter for the um, soldiers from Framingham in the French and Indian War. And he had a trumpet, and he had a grandson. And his grandson was named Abel. And Abel ended up with Grandpa Nero's trumpet. So, 1775, Framingham Common. The soldiers are drilling. The militia is drilling. And they look over, and they see this little boy with a trumpet. And one of the men in charge walks over and say, Can you play that thing, boy? And he lets out with a loud blast. And they remember that kid on the 18th of April in 75. And many men were required to let people know to go to Concord and Lexington. And one of the messengers was Abel Benson. They picked him up, put him in front of a man on a horse, and he rode through Dover and Needham. And at each house, he gave a loud blast. Well, Paul Revere had a poem written about him now, didn't he? I thought Abel Benson deserved one, too. Young Abel Benson, come blow your horn. The regulars march with speed you must warn. Dedham's militia, Needham's farmers all armed. Gallop through fields, spread the alarm. Every patriot's needed. Yes, every one. Fast march to Concord as quick as you can. Your clarion trumpet blares out loud and strong. Middlesex yeoman. A determined, brave throng. <laughs> this is a song I wrote called Marisol. It was inspired by the late Larry Fine, the colleague of the Howard brothers, Moe and Curly. It's called Marisol. <laughs> Thank you. 
Iron Soul. Thank you very much. Peach and pear.